Well, it's a great joy to welcome you to our service of worship. Welcome to all who are here in the sanctuary uh, and all who are sharing the service online. Today we are celebrating our patronal festival, the Feast of the Conversion of St. Paul, and after the service, our annual meeting of parishioners. In our service, we're exploring the story of how Jesus' light opened St. Paul's heart and mind to God's grace, our parish vision for us and for all people. Written orders of service are available on the credenza by the sanctuary entrance, and also the sermons section of our website. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Our God of amazing grace, we thank you so much for the privilege of gathering together today. We pray for your hand of blessing upon our annual meeting, and we pray for that same hand of blessing upon the service that we are about to share. May your loving purposes be accomplished in our lives and your name glorified in all things. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. All who are able, I invite to stand and sing God whose almighty word. with the greeting. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to, to you all hearts are open, open all desires all known, and, and from you no secrets are, are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And we 
say together the collect. Almighty God, by the preaching of your servant Paul, you caused the light of the gospel to shine throughout the world. May we who celebrate his wonderful conversion follow him in bearing witness to your truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading from Holy Scripture. A reading from the Book of Acts. Indeed, I myself was convinced that I ought to do many things against the name of Jesus of Nazareth. And that is what I did. In Jerusalem, with authority received from the chief priests, I not only locked up many of the saints in prison, but I also cast my vote against them when they were being condemned to death. By punishing them often in all the synagogues, I tried to force them to blaspheme. And since I was so furiously enraged at them, I pursued them even to foreign cities. With this in mind, I was traveling to Damascus with the authority and commission of the chief priests. When at midday, along the road, Your Excellency, I saw a light from heaven, brighter than the sun, shining around me and my companions. When we'd all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew language, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? It hurts you to kick against the goads. I asked, who are you, Lord? The Lord answered, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But get up, stand on your feet, for I have appeared to you for this purpose, to appoint you to serve and testify to the things in which you have seen me and to those in which I will appear to you. I will rescue you from your people and from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, so that they may receive forgiveness of sins and a place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. After that, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision, but declared first to those in Damascus, then in Jerusalem and throughout the countryside of Judea, and also to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God and do deeds consistent with repentance. For this reason, the Jews seized me in the temple and tried to kill me. To this day, I have had help from God, and so I stand here testifying to both small and great saying nothing but what the prophets and Moses said would take place, that the Messiah must suffer, and that by being the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light both to our people and to the Gentiles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 67. We will say the psalm responsibly breaking at the asterisk. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show, Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy. For you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let, Let all the peoples, peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing. And may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Let us pray. Are you Lord our God? Light of the earth and health of the nations, you lead us in the way of justice and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
The second reading is from Galatians. Somewhere. Yes. <laughs> For I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that the gospel that was proclaimed by me is not of human origin. For I did not receive it from a human source, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. You have heard, no doubt, of my earlier life in Judaism. I was violently persecuted in the Church of God and was trying to destroy it. I advanced in Judaism be beyond many among my people of the same age, for I was far more zealous for the traditions of my ancestors. But when God, who had set me apart before I was born and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me so that I might proclaim him among the Gentiles, I did not confer with any human being, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were already apostles before me. But I went away at once into Arabia and afterwards I returned to Damascus. Then after three years, I did go up to Jerusalem to visit Cephas and stay with him, stayed with him for 15 days. But I did not see any other apostle except James, the Lord's brother. In what I am writing to you before God, I do not lie. Then I went into the region of Syria and Cilicia, and I was still known by sight to the churches of Judea and that, that are in Christ. They only, heard, they only heard it said, the one who formerly was persecuting, or persecuting us is now proclaiming the faith he once tried to destroy. And they glorified God because of me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All who are able, I invite now to stand as we sing our gradual hymn, Bless Are the Pure in Heart. be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said to the disciples, See, I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. For what you are to say will be given to you at the time, for it is not you who speak, but the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will be 
betray brother to death, and a father his child, and the children will rise against parents and have them put to death, and you will be hated by all because of my name. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. The Gospel of Christ. I speak to you in the name of the one true and living God our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer. Amen. Amen. Today we celebrate the feast of the conversion of St. Paul. I suspect that many of us have been taught that Saul, a persecutor of the early followers of Jesus, is blinded on the road to Damascus and becomes Paul the proclaimer of Jesus. This transformation is something of the biblical equivalent of Clark Kent becoming Superman, or Bruce Wayne becoming Batman, with the twist that Saul was surely bad and Paul was purely good. The unfortunate thing about this way of telling the story is that we get hung up in several places. First, the name change. Careful examination of Luke's story in Acts shows us that it is several chapters after Saul's conversion that the name changes. And then it comes not with a change in personality or attitude on the part of Saul, but rather as he moves in the story from Hebrew-speaking to Greek-speaking communities. In other words, Saul's name doesn't change. We are just given the Greek version of it as he preaches to a Greek audience, or so it seems. The second unfortunate thing here is that the focus on the change in Paul might seem attractive to us, but it leads us to conclude that Paul is somehow a hero. But in Acts, he is far less than perfect. Indeed, he is very human. He is prone to pride, and he makes mistakes. Paul is no superhero. And Paul readily admits his faults and shortcomings in several of his letters. The saintliness of Paul, then, just as with the rest of us, has nothing to do with moral perfection, or with always being right, or the absolute correctness of his teaching. Rather, it has to do with the degree to which Paul draws attention to Christ. The third unfortunate aspect of how this story is usually interpreted has to do with the name of the feast itself, the conversion of St. Paul. But was it really a conversion? The word is generally used to refer to a change of religion. That is what the verb convert means, to change. But was it that for Paul? First of all, the word conversion is not found in the New Testament in association with Paul's own mission. Rather, what happened to Paul was not so much a conversion as a call, a call to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. Today's feast would be, in my opinion, more appropriately called the call of St. Paul, rather than the conversion of St. Paul. Paul did not, after all, become an apostle of Jesus Christ because he rejected his Jewish identity or faith. On the contrary, he was a happy Jew, fully believing himself to be fulfilling the requirements of the law and the demands of his faith. What happens on the Damascus Road, then, is not a conversion, 
a rejection of his past identity and faith, but rather a fuller realization of what the implications of that faith really are. He is graced with radical insight. Not radical in the sense of new or innovative, but rather radical in the true sense of the word, which means going back to the root or the source. Uh, radical has the same root as radish, right, that root vegetable that we like to eat. <laughs> the radical center of Paul's preaching is that in Jesus, the covenant God made with Israel has reached its climax. Paul understands a continuity between the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the God who acted in Jesus Christ. Paul realizes in a way that he had not in the past that the covenant with Abraham was to be a blessing for all peoples, that God wishes to enter into relationship with the very people Paul has been persecuting in God's name. And more than this, the Christ has called Paul to devote his life to proclaiming the good news of his death and resurrection, not only to his own people, but to all peoples. Paul, a student of the law, grasps for the first time the heart of the law, not as a set of requirements to do in order to find favor with God or a means to distinguish between those, God, those called by God as God's own from all others, but rather as a way of life, perhaps captured most succinctly in the words of the prophet Micah, and what does the Lord God require you to do but to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with your God? Or in the prayer said daily by all Jews, the Shema, and which we know is the summary of the law. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The extraordinary thing that we learn about God and Jesus through the story of Paul is that forgiveness is possible at all. Acts portrays Paul as the greatest enemy of the earliest followers of the way. But rather than smite him or demonize him, Jesus instead takes Paul's gifts of zeal and persuasion and puts them to work for the gospel. An encounter with the risen Lord can do that for a person. There have been countless stories over the years that proclaim this basic principle. The good news in this story is that God doesn't give up on Paul, nor does God give up on us. Even when we are at enmity with God, God loves us and claims us. And since God does not separate us into good people and bad people, we no longer have to do that with each other. We need not justify our actions by pointing at others and proclaiming how bad they are, quite simply because God does not. As the story is told in Acts, we may, be led to dis we may be led to believe that this was a sudden, once and for all event. But as Paul himself tells the story in his letters, this insight and response was more prolonged and gradual. Paul's life and letters demonstrate that he struggled and wrestled with the implications of his radical understanding of the faith. Too many of us, I think, are waiting in anticipation of a road to Damascus experience, a sudden, all-encompassing, once and for all, life-changing experience of the risen Lord. And we judge ourselves too harshly for not having been, in popular parlance, born again in this fashion. While I certainly do not deny that some may have such an experience, I would suggest that Paul was not really one of them, 
and that most of us experience God's revelation and call to us gradually. Most of us, like Paul, continue to wrestle with our faith, and yet God nonetheless finds a use for us, just as God found a use for Paul. Paul was not perfect. Paul was not a super hero. Paul could and can be incredibly frustrating. And so are most of us. Most of us are not superheroes. Most of us are not perfect. And on occasion, most of us can be pretty frustrating to those around us. But God in Christ comes to us and calls us anyway, often in quiet and subtle ways, often through the words and actions of the people around us, and I suspect especially in those that we are quick to judge and to condemn. The good news of the conversion of Paul is simply that the risen Jesus continues to seek out and encounter a lost and hostile humanity in surprising and startling ways. Our Damascus Road experiences happen as we too are grasped by the risen Lord through word and sacrament, through the events of everyday life, and perhaps even by the occasional extraordinary encounter. We may be blinded and confused momentarily, but in the end, we too are called by God to share the wonderful news that Christ lived, died, and rose for all of us so that we might know the wide embrace of God's love. Amen. Now I invite us to stand as we're able and to confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that he has seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. To the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now I invite us to be seated or kneel, as is our preference, for the prayers of the people. Let us pray together to the Lord by responding to the bidding, Lord, in your mercy, saying, Hear our prayer. Loving God, we thank you for your many gifts to us, for the love which brings us together, for the earth which provides for our needs, but above all, for the new life you have given us in Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray to you for our world, for all its cares and needs for the many people who live and suffer great deprivation at this time, for those who are trapped in war zones 
and areas of conflict, for fugitives and refugees. And we pray that your Holy Spirit might move the hearts of people and leaders around the world that they may come together to work for peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray to you for those in need, for the sick and the lonely, for the hurt and the frightened, and for those who live without hope, and especially those we now name before you who are on our hearts this morning. We ask that you comfort and relieve them, Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those we love who have died and those whose names are known to you alone. And we name them now before you. We ask that you will surround them with your care and love. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for one another, asking you to bless us, our friends and relatives. Bless the places where we work and bless our homes and our life together. Lord, in your mercy. And now we'll say together the prayer for our annual parish meeting. Almighty and ever-living God, source of all wisdom and understanding, be present with those who take counsel in our annual meeting for the renewal and mission of your church. Teach us in all things to seek first your honor and glory. Guide us to perceive what is right. Grant us both the courage to pursue it and the grace to accomplish it. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now let's say together our parish prayer. O God of infinite grace, we give you thanks and praise for calling our congregation into being and then continuing in loving relationship with us in great faithfulness over the years to bless, transform, and guide. At St. Paul's, you have given us a mission that will never change with time, to live out your love as revealed in Jesus Christ. It is your will that, with your help, we shall discover your presence in word and sacrament, deepen our sense of Christian community, share your word, nurture your people, encourage congregational and personal growth on our shared journey, act on your call for peace and justice, and build the foundation for tomorrow's church. Help us to respond to your love by dedicating ourselves with joy as a parish family to this mission. Pour out your spirit upon us and work mightily in our midst to bring about its accomplishment. Fulfill your vision of opening hearts and minds to your grace in us and through us, now and forevermore. This we ask for the glory and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to this table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's uh, stand and give, greet one another with the peace of Christ. Please be seated. At this time, we're pausing for a moment to share our, uh, or to remember rather, our call to offer to God our time, talents, and treasure to share the gifts God has shared with us. And uh, one way that we share our treasures is through the offerings that we give to St. Paul's. I'd like to thank everyone for continuing to give financially to the parish. Uh, your giving is essential for us to carry out the mission of spreading the good news of light and love throughout the world, in word and in deed. One way offerings can be shared is by placing them on the offering plate on the credenza by the sanctuary entrance. Uh, and our screens uh, will show in just a moment a, a slide with other ways that we can participate in our mission by sharing our financial support. As we watch this, let's listen to our choir sing as an anthem Seek ye first. Now we share together the prayer over the gifts, and I invite you to stand as you're able as we do this. Almighty God, as we celebrate this Holy Eucharist, may your Spirit fill us with the light of faith. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good to be for thanks and praise. We 
give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, for the gift of the world full of wonder and for our life which comes from you. By your power, you sustain the universe. Glory to you forever and ever. You created us to love you with all our heart and to love each other as ourselves, but we rebel against you by the evil that we do. In Jesus, your Son, you bring healing to our world and gather us into one great family. Therefore, with all who serve you on earth and in heaven, we praise your wonderful name as we sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, and far full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks and praise, loving Father, because in sending Jesus, your Son, to us, you showed us how much you love us. He cares for the poor and the hungry. He suffers with the sick and the rejected. Betrayed and forsaken, he did not strike back, but overcame hatred with love. On the cross, he defeated the power of sin and death. By raising him from the dead, you show us the power of your love to bring new life to all your people. Glory to you On the night before he gave up his life for us, Jesus, at supper with his friends, took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is shed for you and for many so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Gracious God, with this bread and wine, we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus, and we offer ourselves to you in him. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that we may know the presence of Jesus in the breaking of bread and share in the life of the family of your children. Father, you call us to be your servants. Fill us with the courage and love of Jesus that all the world may gather in joy at the table of your kingdom. We sing your praise, Almighty Father, through Jesus our Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Break the bread of life, and that life is the light of the world. God. 
out here among us, light in the midst of us, bring us to life and life. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. We now have the most wonderful blessing of receiving our Lord into our hearts as we feed on him by faith with thanksgiving. If you'd like to partake of Holy Communion at home, you can pick up preserved sacrament during office hours and then hold on to it until this point in the service. If you're partaking of communion here in the sanctuary uh, this morning, please come up uh, when the sides persons indicate that it's your rose turn. And uh, gluten-free hosts are available upon request. If you don't wish to partake of communion but would like to receive a blessing, please come to the front and place your arms in the shape of a cross over your chest. But I invite us all to share now these gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
Now, as we're able, I invite us to stand as we sing our hymn after communion, Everything We Need. share together the prayer after communion. Gracious God, you filled your apostle Paul with love for all the churches. May the sacrament we have received foster love and unity among your people. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Just share some announcements. I'd like to begin by welcoming any who are visiting or here for the first time in person or online. If you'd like to make St. Paul's your parish home or just learn more about us, please do fill out the card in the ends of your pew and give it to, to uh, Norman, Betty, or to me. Uh, or you can uh, contact the office to email one to you. 
Everyone's invited to our annual meeting of parishioners, which takes place today after the service, uh, around 11 is when we'll start. Uh, this year it's back to being in person in the hall with lunch provided. But the meeting is being live streamed to Facebook, so those who can't attend in person are invited to watch the meeting online. Uh, if you're watching online, you'll have the status of observer. You won't be officially recorded as an AMP participant or have a vote or forum for live interaction. Uh, the AMP documents uh, are being handed out uh, at the meeting and they're also available at our website. And Paul, uh, it's an event in the events folder now, right? Yeah, so easier to find them now than it was uh, before. So check events and you'll get them. Uh, Pioneers of Paul, Pop volunteered at the Mustard Seed yesterday, sorting clothes at the Donation Center. Uh, they enjoyed themselves, and the people from Mustard Seed were impressed at all the work they got done. Our in-person Wednesday Holy Eucharist and Wednesdays with the Word Bible Study occur on the odd Wednesdays of the month at 9.30 and 10.30, respectively. And the next of these occur this Wednesday. Our adult education study, Being Anglican, is continuing this Wednesday as well. We're exploring the 2021 and 22 material with this name from the Worldwide Anglican Communion. This epiphany season, we are sharing five studies looking at Anglican church life and the five marks of mission. And we're doing this on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom uh, up to and including February 15th. If you'd like to participate, please contact me for the link. Next Sunday, February 5th, we are celebrating the Feast of the Presentation of the Lord, or Candlemas, together. Everyone's invited to bring uh, candles from home to be blessed. And so the idea is that they're blessed at the service. And then for the rest of the year, you use those in your perhaps per, uh, family uh, prayer time, things like that. Confirmation preparation is underway, and we are showing and discussing the new Alpha Youth series in our junior high Sunday school class, and now we are going to be doing that on the first and third Sundays of the month, uh, so the next of these occurs next Sunday. A temporary leader for a pop is needed to uh, support co-leader Karen while Laura is away from March to mid-April, uh, detailed instructions and support are available. Uh, to find out more, or if you believe that God is nudging you to serve in this ministry, please contact Laura. For all that's happening at St. Paul's, please check out our weekly communications. Those are our news bulletin, my email on Fridays or Saturdays, and our Sunday morning email newsletter, and also our monthly communication, which is our issues of living waters. Well, as we go forth and go into our annual meeting, we remember how we are united in our Lord's family. And so let's sing about that as we go. Bind us together.
the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.